This is part 3 of the beam engine build. In part 1 and 2 you can see how I made all this. In part 2 there were lots of comments about my valve system and lots of them talk about the same, not completely the same, but about the same system. If I'm able to change the position of this little piston inside, I can change the timing. And in fact, that is not correct. I will explain on the blackboard why it works and why it doesn't work. But first, I have to wait that this drawing disappears. Really handy. Let's go for it. Take a piece of chalk. We're gonna make a diagram a bit like in the car engines. Yeah. Gonna take this away, it's ugly. This point is a zero degree, yeah, okay, 90 degree, 180 degree. No problem. This represents the movement of the crank pin. I suppose that's not too complicated to understand. Which means at zero degrees the piston is completely up in the cylinder. Well, hey, the piston is completely down in the cylinder. Of course we're gonna use the system they use always as uh, in car drawings we use them on the top my engine is upside down but for <coughs> to make it easier to understand if you want to check on the internet or something the drawings are always made with the piston up much easier right the piston is up to be good here the intake valve should open that counts only for low running engines this is pure theory okay open let air in until the piston is completely down here we gonna close intake valve from the moment the piston is down we can open the exhaust valve and close here again, that should be the ideal world situation. What I had on my little engine here, with my valve, is that it's pushed down by the other beam. The back beam is gonna operate the front piston. Yeah, it's crossed otherwise it doesn't work. So what happens? is that my valve, this is the center, my valve is opening here, closing here. If I change the position of the valve, I only change this angle here between inlet and exhaust. Of course, at this moment, here the valve opens, I'm gonna push the piston down, but in the wrong direction, my engine is running that way, of course. So what I have to do is make eccentrics, so I can change this angle, yeah? not the opening time, but the timing in relationship with the crank. So this angle should be about something like this, I hope. This is uh, more or less clear. If not, don't be afraid. Ask questions, put it in the comment sections. Now, to be able to change the timing in relationship to the crank pin or the piston position, I started already to make this eccentrics. Of course, I have two because it's a two cylinder engine. Let's start only one. If the 
eccentric is completely up the valve will be pushed up is closed yeah completely down the valve is completely down valve open not complicated now this eccentric <coughs> again this eccentric I will be able to position it in relationship to the crankshaft on the beams they move the same time as the crankshaft there's no difference in timing here if I want I can change the position in relationship so that's what we're gonna do I just have to drill and tap two little holes in here put the set screw and mount it on the engine now in the comments there was also someone who said uh, whatever you do even with eccentrics it will never work watch this now what we see here this is the crank pin and of course here the eccentric the engine is running the piston is going up piston is completely up and now the valve is gonna open now air is coming in the crank pin is behind you can see it it's completely under yeah completely low and the valve is closed again which means now all this half rotation the air can come out here on the back side there's a hole maybe I turn a bit I don't know if you can see here's a hole and here comes the air back out now if you're interested in more details about this build I will give them at the end of the video so people that are not really interested in details and just want to see the build of it they can cut out and go watch something else if you're interested stay till the end and I will explain a little bit more The position of the crank pin is always fixed because I had here a very tiny little hole where the set screw goes in. So this timing is always the same. Good. Now I can change the position of the eccentric in relationship to the crank. Right, 
now that the eccentrics are in place, of course they are not timed yet, I'm gonna start mounting these valves and they will come around here somewhere. I already started to prepare a little backplate that I'm gonna mount here. You just have to drill two holes in this tent here. Mount these valves on and they will push against the eccentric. Now of course this thickness is 6 mm and this is 10 mm so I have to turn it down and cut off a whole lot just to make it fit. But cut off is always a lot easier than put on again. Now I have to determine where I have to cut off this valve stem and to do that I think the easiest way is to measure with my calipers here somewhere if I can reach. It's not really straight but I'm gonna learn to live with it. This is 10.2. Put my homemade machine here like this. Easiest way is of course set the zero. But I'm not gonna cut it off at 10.2 millimeter. I'm gonna make it nine so I have a little bit of play. Nine point zero two, that will do. This is more or less the idea. Now I'm gonna reassemble a bit and see if it runs on one cylinder. Why one cylinder? Because the other valve is not cut yet. I have, still have to do this. So I'm gonna connect some ugly plastic tubes here. Right, I'm gonna do that and bring you back. I think we're getting somewhere. Let's do the other side because after all it's a two cylinder. For the moment it works on only one. The other valve here is uh, finished, it's installed. I haven't tried it yet first. I'm trying to fix in the air leaks, so I put some Teflon tape on and then a little bit more of thickness around these tubes. Now what I don't understand is that 
they sell 9 mm diameter tubes in the store where I bought this and the smallest clamps they have is 10 mm so I don't know what they were thinking but plus this kind of clamps I think they're really dangerous because when you try to tie them your screwdriver always slips out and then you harakiri your hands the thing refused to work and I couldn't figure out why I took out the pistons so I can hear when the air come out and now I've got it these tubes must be connected the other way that's all this one comes here oh please don't escape this one here Now that the whole thing is assembled and it seems to work on one cylinder and on the other cylinder, but of course the meaning is that they work together. So I need to get air in these two tubes at the same time with my air pistol thing here. It's really not easy of course, that doesn't work. So, the ideal should be to have a T system, air in, two times air out, and a valve so I can regulate the flow of air. Maybe not the pressure, but the flow of air. Can I make that? Yes, I can! Oh. This one I made, I can connect directly on my air hose. Two sides air come out and here I have valve. This is just a bolt <coughs> where I pressed on a little uh, <laughs> thing here. Should be nice with a knurl, but I don't have a knurling tool. Let's give it a try. Now that we know that it works, maybe I can explain a little bit more some details. For that I need my glasses of course. Now, first of all, a disclaimer. <coughs> this is not the way how to build a steam engine. Because nowhere I used bearing uh, materials. The only bearings are here. They hold the flywheel in place. There's no play or nothing, but you hear them cry for help. These bearings are completely worn out. Just old bearings for what I do here is good enough. These points these points in here, there's no bearing material. I only used a little piece of aluminium here to make a bushing on this one and on this one. Now, of course, aluminium is not a good bearing material. That doesn't work. <coughs> Sorry. This little engine is not meant to run during hours. It's not a masterpiece, it's not gonna be in a museum or nothing. It 
was just a fun build, that's all. So if I'm gonna run it during hours, it will be completely worn in no time. Because the valve system is soft steel on soft steel. That doesn't work for long. The piston and the cylinders are also soft steel. Normally you use castings to do uh, pistons and cylinders. They can better take this difference of heat and cold when you run it on steam. This low point also no bearing material. It will absolutely not last forever. Someone asked me for a few dimensions. Let's go for it. Glasses again. I made the cylinders from one and a quarter inch pipe. The flywheel, my scale is a bit too short for it, but I think it must be eight and a half inch, maybe 200 millimeters, so somewhere around. Now what I didn't put in the build video because I think it's uh, too boring and it's gonna make it way too long, is all these fiddly parts, you know, shorten these very small bolts and drill and tap these uh, holes and then make a special little washers, one here and one here and then one behind here, so it's not too sloppy. There is a bit movement, but not too much. The other one exactly the same, so no problem. Making these parts, you can see it in the video, but quickly built, in fact, it takes lots of time to, to do that. When I made this one, I just copied the coupling system for the air hose. I had this one, but there's no threads on it. So I made myself another one with a 8mm thread and I put in here. After this one was made, I think, hey, that should be fun if I could put it here on the engine itself. Too late. First do and then thinking after, not, not always a good idea. Because the hoses are in the way and I need access to the hand wheel, the hose is coming out both ways and then the air hose comes in here. There's not enough room here, nowhere to install this. So I have to make a new one where the air hoses come out both, for example, on top, that could work. But one day, maybe, probably never. Let's go over to the lathe and see what kind of problems we had over there. If you look at this little machine, you could say, hey, that's a nice one. Yes, it's a perfect size for what I do, I really like it, but there are several problems with it. First of all, the headstock is not in line with the bed, which means I always cut a taper and not a cylinder. Now, for the most things I do, that's not really a problem. If I make a little boring bar, or a tap wrench, who cares that it's a bit tapered. To make pistons and cylinders that should fit over the whole length, that's where the problem starts, because the taper is large on this side and goes small over here. So I want to fit the piston and in the beginning it's too loose and when you get to the middle it doesn't fit anymore. Which means when I take the final pass I always dial out while the carriage is moving. So my piston 
in my, the piston in the cylinders they do this and that's why I have to uh, finish them by hand with my wooden uh, sand paper system here and it takes a lot of time to make them fit and that's why you see in part 2 of this build series that when I make the piston and I want to start uh, I would say uh, finishing the, the cylinder and the piston together they get stuck in the beginning no problem it fits and when you go further in it doesn't fit anymore Second problem, there is lots of play in this carriage. There is movement left and right. I think it's moving a bit this way. Which means that if you cut a finishing pass on this top wrench, you can see better, it leaves lines. You can even feel them and measuring them for a tap wrench, who cares? For piston and cylinders, it's a bit delicate to have different thicknesses in your finished product. I don't have any change gears for this lathe, so I have to do with what's in the gearbox, and I can twist a bit when I change positions of the gears I can't close the door anymore and sometimes it's a bit dangerous because if you don't pay attention you can lean on your machine and put your fingers in the gears so it's not a good idea the biggest thread I can cut is a thread that doesn't exist it's almost one millimeter pitch how much exactly I don't know which means that also I don't know how much I have to dial in to cut the thread. So it's a bit trial and error thread. But because this machine is cutting a taper, in the beginning the thread is perfect, no problem. And the more you thread in, you start uh, threading in. And then it starts to, to bind again. And then again the finishing pass start to cut and then every time dial in a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and stop in time that's the fun we have to face working with this machine now let's talk a bit problems I have with the shaper I don't have any problems with the shaper it's a perfect machine. What I wanted to point out in this video is that you don't need much to make something. This is all scrap. The only thing I bought is this ugly plastic tube. Total cost about almost nothing. Now, <clears throat> I did this surface here on the base in the shape. If you don't have a shaper, you don't have a milling machine, that's not really a problem because there's no strictly need to clean up this surface. Take the rust off and it will work. Now, normally all these bearing uh, pieces, things and the valve system should be drilled and reamed at precision and then you can make the little pistons that goes in precise. I didn't do that because I don't have any reamers so it's just drilled with a 9mm drill and then adapt the piston and hope that it works. Now they're not really tight in it but you, you see that it works. To make the eccentrics here, I soft soldered the bolts in place. 
if you don't have soldering uh, equipment or welding equipment, just use Loctite. That's not expensive. Loctite will do the trick. You will see. To make eccentrics, I did this in the late, but there's also another system. Let me show you on the blackboard. What the... I think it's broke. I will show you another time. No problem. If you want to build something and you think it's too complicated, so you hesitate to start. Stop hesitating and just go for it. Ooh. And I also fixed my oil pot.